Hey friends, my number one favorite gallery show in New York right now is the work of Yuji Agematsu at the Miguel Abreu Gallery in the Lower East Side. The artist collects tiny pieces of trash off the sidewalks of New York City every single day for the last 30 years. And then he arranges these tiny trash still lives into shelved sets for every month. They are called zips and they visually correspond to how we represent that particular month on a calendar. There is a fantastic article that was just published in The New Yorker. I've put the link in the description of this video where the reporter follows him throughout the entire day. The most kind of shocking and surprising thing to me in the article was that the cigarette pack cellophane wrappers are his. He smokes a pack of cigarettes a day, every single day, for 30 years. And the New Yorker article gets into his exact method of how he uses them, and so I'm going to demonstrate. I don't smoke, so M&Ms. He starts the walk with an empty cigarette box, and when he finds the first piece of garbage, he removes the cellophane, puts the little piece of garbage inside, and then puts the cellophane inside the box, so that when he puts it in his pocket, uh, that little still life that he's collecting is preserved. The show is particularly special because it has two full years. One from 2003, which is everything I've been showing you and how he's working today, and the other is from 1995, which shows really the origin of the idea, which first of all answers the question that you've had since the very beginning of this video, and that is why they are called zips. The earlier work are called ziplocs, and at some point he loses the ziploc bag and starts using his own cigarette pack as, as containers, which I think are way more visual compelling because they are more three-dimensional and kind of open to the world as if the garbage is in its natural habitat and they are called zips because they are missing the lock. If you, if you want to experience the calendars in order all you really have to know is where January is and then the entire thing runs clockwise from there. He said since he was a little kid, he's, he's enjoyed walking with purpose. And, and after you've seen this show, I guarantee you will do the same thing. Like as I'm walking through, I'm like, dang, there's a lot of, of lollipop sticks. He must really love lollipop sticks. But after seeing the show, walking around the streets of New York, I didn't realize how many lollipop sticks there are everywhere. I had never noticed them before. So it occurred to me that they're kind of like uh, little kid cigarette butts. You know, smokers are always tossing their cigarette butts and little kids who just went to the doctor office and got their lollipop uh, are just flicking them on the sidewalk. It also made me think of, at one point I saw a YouTube video on strawberry picking. I don't know if you know this, but when you go to the grocery store and you get your thing of strawberries, like that case is the thing that the harvesters used to pick the strawberries. So you're touching a physical package that literally went around the strawberry field. And also on view, really quickly, are his journals. He logs the time and place that he's picked up everything and his abstract sketches. In between his walks, he'll often uh, remember them and inspired by the pathway and the number of footsteps, perhaps he creates these abstract drawings as he's reflecting on the walk. Again, I think it's about the mindfulness of walking more than it is about uh, archiving, you know, human garbage. Yuji Agematsu is on view at the Miguel Abreu Gallery in the Lower East Side through June 21st. Details are below, and don't forget that New Yorker article, which has gems of sentences in it, like, at a newsstand outside a nearby Starbucks, he scored an M&M, its dye dissolved from the morning rain and half its shell missing. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in a couple weeks. To answer your question, yes, there are moments when I'm in a gallery and I'm, I'm loving looking at tiny pieces of garbage, and then logic shoots into my brain for a second, and I think, like, how is this art, and what is happening, and how did you end up here? Do you know what I'm saying? My interest in art started uh, really appreciating and loving what I would call skill-based art. I loved illustration like Norman Rockwell. To this day, I still love watching those high-skilled time-lapse YouTube videos of people making drawings that look like photographs. I'm super into that still. But there was a moment my first year of college 
where I was at the Seattle Art Museum uh, on my way to see something, and I walked by a Mark Rothko. If you're unfamiliar, it's just a, a blob of hazy color, and that's it. And 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 something at that moment kind of affected me in in a really inexplicable way. And that's that I really, in my gut, loved it. But in my brain was was screaming, but it's no skill and it's completely stupid and this represents everything that is wrong with modern art. And that kind of disagreement of logically hating something and yet in your gut, like really loving it and wanting to kind of stay there and bask in whatever kind of feeling you get from it, that kind of collision in my brain uh, has never been resolved in in over 20 years and I still love that feeling when I go to a contemporary art gallery when I see work like Yuji's work where logically it's just like no but yet I completely love it and I've overheard conversations where you get like a super art nerd uh, bringing their parent or something to a gallery or, or, or a friend to a gallery and that person says but why is this art? I don't understand what's happening. And then the art expert nerd will say, well, because it's the idea. Like they had the idea. And if you had the idea, then you would be an artist. Uh, or they get into like, well, but you have to understand where our history was at at the time and what they influenced in, in all this. And to me, those explanations have never made any sense whatsoever. If someone comes to me and says, I don't understand why garbage is art and, and the artist didn't even make it and it's completely stupid, my response is usually, yeah, like I 100% agree. And yet, I still love it. And it's that disagreement that makes me almost love the activity of art viewing more to kind of hit those surprises and shocks to my brain when I, when I expect to hate something and yet I just don't. It's the, it's the inexplicability of that which makes this world so entertaining for me. Again, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.